Here's a guy with some questions that he thinks are difficult for atheists to answer. Many people leave Christianity because of some questions that are hard to answer. I acknowledge this, but I also know that you've got much harder questions if you're an atheist. They'd be harder for you if you were an atheist, maybe. Now just some definitions real quick. I'm defining an atheist as someone who does not believe in God or any sort of supernatural, like, human soul or something. What if you believe in the soul but not God? It's kind of weird to define atheist in such a way that excludes some people who do not believe in any God. The first question that they really can't answer is why is human life worth more than an animal life? It's not inherently. In fact, I don't see anything as having inherent value. Something is valuable only insofar as someone values it. I don't value the life of a human zygote more than I value the life of an adult chimpanzee. I don't value anything that lacks a nervous system more than anything that does have a nervous system, because I empathize with creatures that can suffer, and an organism that lacks a nervous system like a human zygote cannot suffer. But, um... We know that human life is superior to animal life. Human life was set apart in the, um, in the Garden of Eden. Regardless of how literally you take that story, the Bible is very clear that human life is set apart and superior in some sense to animal life. In what sense in particular? Why is human life more valuable per se than animal life? Because God says so? Why ought we care what God says? What objective reason is there to obey God? Um, I believe animals have some kind of soul, but not a rational soul the way humans do. I think that was the view of, like, Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas. Yeah, but Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas didn't believe that every member of a human species had a rational soul. Aristotle says in De Anima that he didn't believe that a human embryo acquired a rational soul until 40 days after conception, or 90 days after conception for girls. Aquinas agreed with Aristotle. In De Potentia, he says it is clear that the embryo lives before the infusion of the rational soul. I think that makes the most sense. Um, but yeah, because we believe in the human soul, we believe that humans are inherently superior to animals. How does that follow? Why does a human soul make humans superior to animals? And superior in what sense exactly? But atheists who, um, generally speaking, do not believe in the human soul don't really have much of a logical case for saying that human life is worth more than animal life. Again, something has value insofar as it is valued. I value human life because I empathize with suffering, and most humans have a greater capacity for suffering than most non-humans do. I think many non-human animals have just as much of a capacity for pain as humans, but humans, because they have a self-concept, have a greater capacity for forms of suffering like embarrassment and self-pity. I can also empathize with the hopes a person may have for the future, which non-humans don't seem to have the same capacity to formulate, since few, if any, of them can make long-term plans. Most atheists I know would still say that it's worse to kill a human than to kill a fly. Not a human zygote. Not unless the parent of that zygote valued it. If the parent didn't value the zygote, and I don't value the zygote, then killing that human is no worse than killing the fly. In fact, it might even be worse to kill the fly because the fly has a nervous system and might be capable of suffering, whereas a zygote does not. But why? Um, now the, the first answer they'll give, the most obvious one, is oh, because it's humans are more intelligent. That's not the answer I gave. First of all, humans are not all more intelligent than non-humans. A human embryo is not more intelligent than an adult mouse, for example. Insofar as I value humans more than animals, I do so because most humans have a greater capacity to suffer than non-humans do. That's a product of our greater intelligence, but it is not the intelligence per se that I value. Um, but there's problems with that. First of all, if um, intelligence is what determines the value of a life, then is a smart person's life worth more than a dumb person? No, because any person, by definition, has the same capacity to suffer. I would define a person as anyone able to conceive of their own existence. Since you need to be able to conceive of your own existence to value it, it is that self-awareness that, Ceteris Paribus, makes me value organisms who have it more than organisms that do not. An organism that is aware of its own existence, and is thus able to value it, is one whose concern for their life allows me to be able to empathize with the value they place on their life. They know, instinctively, and they're correct about this, that human life is worth more than an animal life. I don't know that, and I don't believe that. I don't value a human embryo more than I value the life of an adult dolphin. Now you might ask, what about a newborn? 
Since we can't pinpoint the exact moment at which a baby gains self-awareness, I think it's best to err on the side of caution and treat them like persons from birth. So they really can't explain why humans have any inherent worth at all, and that's why the most general regimes in history were atheistic. The conquistadors were atheistic, were they? The next question that atheists really can't answer is why should humans care about the environment? Because we need the environment in order to live. Do you really need to believe in God in order to oppose a chemical plant dumping carcinogens into your drinking water? Now, atheists are often very environmentalist. I think in America, at least, atheists are much more likely than Christians to be talking about climate change. And I'm not here to say climate change isn't real. I don't think it's going to destroy the world. I think it's going to have bad impacts that is going to make life harder for people. And if we're Christians, we should care about that. But I think in a Christian worldview, it's a lot more consistent to care about the environment than an atheist one. Because if atheists believe we're just like other animals, like ontologically, then what humans destroying the environment is just natural. Do you know what an appeal to nature fallacy is? Just because something is natural doesn't mean it's good. Also, the word natural is typically used to mean not artificial or not caused by humans. Pollution caused by humans is, by definition, not natural, regardless of whether we are animals. And again, even if it were natural, there are lots of natural things that you don't have to believe in God in order to oppose or want to prevent. A huge asteroid hitting the Earth would be natural. Do you really think that you have to believe in God in order to want to stop such a natural event from occurring? Because no other animals care about the environment, all, all animals just do what they feel like to survive. Yes, and the reason I want to curb pollution is because, like other animals, I would feel like doing so to survive. Like in the forest by my house, it's infested with deer, and deer are terrible for the environment when they um, overpopulate because they eat all the saplings and then new trees can't grow. So the deer are very bad for the environment, but they have no responsibility. They're not self-conscious about what they're doing for the environment, and even if you could somehow communicate it to them, they wouldn't care, because animals are amoral beings. Insofar as they are overgrazing their own source of food, which would hurt them in the long run, if you could communicate that to them, they would care if they cared about their own survival. And you don't have to believe in a god in order to not want to die. That's the reason I care about the environment. It's because my survival depends on a healthy environment, not because I feel some moral obligation to the trees. So, the moral argument doesn't prove God exists, it just proves that morals can't exist if God doesn't exist. And basically every atheist philosopher I've ever read has admitted this. Has admitted that you can't have objective morality with God, we just need to do our best with subjective morality. I would say that even if a God does exist, there is no objective morality because there is no non-circular objective reason why we ought to do what God says is right. And thing number three is similar. Um, it, it's, it also has to do with the environment, but it's basically why should we care about anything that's not, like, directly related to our own pleasure. Basically, why should we care about whether um, humanity will flourish a hundred years from now, or a thousand years from now? I don't think there's any objective reason we should, nor does there need to be a reason. I don't care about what happens to future generations because I think I should care. I care because I simply like the idea that humans will flourish in the future and dislike the idea that they won't. I care about the potential of future generations to suffer because I have empathy. Why does my caring need a justification? And even if there is a God who says that we ought to care, why would that constitute an objective reason? Again, what objective, non-circular reason is there for me to care about what God commands? Caring about what God says is as subjective as any moral position I've taken as an atheist. Like, why should we care about the, like, survival of the human species? There's no reason we should care. If every human collectively decided to become antinatalist and never have any more kids and let the species go extinct, I would see no moral problem with that whatsoever. If it wouldn't cause any suffering that anybody didn't consent to, then it would be fine with my conscience. I was watching the movie Interstellar, which is a great movie, by the way. Um, it's about, like, the... Uh, Earth's climate collapsing and needing to find another planet for people to live on. It's a fiction. It's science fiction. I, I don't take it as like a documentary of what's going to actually happen. But it's a good question. It's it's like about the survival of the human species. And yeah, it's it's a very good story. But if you're an atheist, there's no reason to care about the survival of anything really, 
if everything is going to die eventually. Why do I need a reason to care? I don't understand why the fact that I care needs justification. Because, um, according to the laws of physics, according to the second law of thermodi thermodynamics specifically, there's what's called the inevitable heat death of the universe. That means that eventually it's inevitable that everything will die. It's called entropy, for example. Everything dies eventually. So, if you're an atheist and you don't believe that Jesus is coming back to restore all things, then really the survival of humanity is just delaying the inevitable. So we're not really surviving at, surviving at all. There's nothing that's really going to last. Um, we're just delaying the inevitable. So, like, why not just get it over with and f*** everything right now? Well, if you're watching a movie you enjoy, you know the movie is going to end eventually, so why don't you just shut it off and get it over with? Or why don't you just skip to the ending? Why bother enjoying the whole thing? To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.